نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساءة من يدع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعسهما فلا يضر إلا نفسا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحب الأقدة من لسان يبكه قولي أمين يا رب Today what I'm going to talk about is very important, but also very basic. And something that many, many Muslims don't realize, and I'm going to inshallah open these doors for you today. The people before the Prophet or in the Prophet's his own life before he became a Prophet, it is clear from the Quran that they knew Allah. In سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَحْمِلُ اللَّهِ If you ask them, who created the heavens and the earth, they will say Allah. Even the Prophet ﷺ didn't worship any idols in his life. But when that situation occurred, where they needed a just man to decide between them, they didn't hesitate to ask this man who has never worshipped any idols. They had no problem with the acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had no problem to saying to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu that you be the judge between us in regards to our differences before he was a prophet. So then why was there a problem? Why did they have a problem with Prophet Muhammad? If they believed in Allah, they were okay with the fact that he did not worship the idols. They were okay with this. But then when he became a prophet, there was a severe reaction to him. Something interesting I'm going to share with you. In the first four revelations, I will show you both sides actually, inshallah, if I get time. But I'm showing you one side right now. In the first four revelations, what are the first four revelations? Ikra. Mutasir, Muzammil, and Surah Al-Nun, or Surah Al-Qalam, whatever it's called, Surah Al-Nun and Surah Al-Qalam. In all four of these surahs, Allah is introduced in a special way. See, most of humanity, most of humanity is generally in agreement that Allah is the Creator. As a khaliq. As a khaliq, there's no, as a creator, there's no, there's not much disagreement of hum amongst humanity even today. And there was no disagreement on this issue at the time of the Prophet. He's the khaliq. So then why did the Quraysh react to the Prophet ﷺ in the way that they did? Now notice here, I made a very important point and then I'll come to the verses in the Quran. That they were okay with Muhammad وسلم, before he was a prophet that he didn't worship any idols. It wasn't like the case of Ibrahim where they said, where is that man who speaks against our idols? Where, I, where is that young man that speaks against our idols? They, they didn't say ever about the Prophet, why this man is not worshipping our idols. In fact, a sociological look at Mecca and Arabia in general was it was a very pluralistic society, had all sorts of people in it. And it, their relationship with one another was a business relationship. They had Christians there, they had Jews there, they had pagans there, they had Dahriya there, people who don't believe in it. Their relationship was Primarily a business relationship. Makkah was a business center. But then the Quran came. And the Quran introduced Allah in a special way. See, the word Allah is an Arabic word. We know this. 
even before the Quran. And Allahumma is an Arabic word that they used to know Allah by Allah, Allahumma and the word Allah both. But look at the first revelation. I'll show you from all four revelations, the first four. Because Allah did not introduce himself in the Quran, in the first revelation. Allah did not introduce himself, and I'll show you why. Allah did not introduce himself as Allah. Because they already knew Allah. Iqra. Bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. This is what they had the problem with. I'm going to explain. Read in the name of your Rabb, or translated many times as Lord, who created. Then again, the word Rabb comes again. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Khalaq al-insana min alaq. Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram. First revelation. I'll explain to you because we don't understand the meaning of the word Rabb and how powerful it is and how revolutionary it is. The second revelation to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu The word Rabb. Sutul Mudathir. Ya ayyuhal Mudathir, um fa'anzir wa rabbaka fa'kabbir. Sutul Muzammil. Ya ayyuhal Muzammil, um il layla illa qalila, nisfahu aw il kusminhu qalila, aw zida alayhi wa rattil il qur'ana tartila, inna sanulqi alayka qawlan saqila, inna nashiatan laylihi ashaddu wat'an wa aqwa muqila, inna laka fin nahari sabhan tuila, wa dhkur isma rabbika wa tabaddal ilayhi tabtila. Whenever Allah was mentioned in the first four revelations, the word was Rabb. Why is this so problematic for the people of Mecca? What is so special about the word Rabb? There were many attributes of Allah, like they said, Man Rahman, who is Rahman? There were many ways, and Allah introduced Himself in a new way that became problematic for the people of Mecca, particularly of all the attributes, the word Rabb became the most problematic. Let me explain it to you this way. The opposite of the word Rabb is Abd. One is Rabb, the other is Abd. Abd is servant. Or rather, this is the wrong translation I gave. Abd is slave. Umayyah bin Khalf is Abd. Uh, sorry, Umayyah bin Khalf is the Rabb. And Bilal is his Abd. Umayyah bin Khalf is the owner, the master. <coughs> And Bilal is his Abd. This is why you have Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Malik Yawmiddin, Iyaka Ni'abudu wa Iyaka Nista'in, as because the opposite of Rabb is Abd. And now let me show you the other side. I'll show you some of it. So I'll come back to this in trouble. Now I was saying, uh, the word Rabb, by the way, is never in the whole of Quran in, with, in, in Ma'arifah. It doesn't have Alif Lam to make it a proper noun. Just as there is no, because it is a Sifa. It is a, it is a quality, it is a Sifa. In the same way, Abd, there is no Al Abd in the Qur'an. For even Prophet Muhammad, who is the Abd, it says Abdu who? Abdu who? Just as a small point, I want to mention something. You will find it interesting. I find it interesting. As Rasul وسلم, because we say Ashhadu Anna Muhammad and Abduhu Rasul. We mention Abduhu first and then Rasulu. But as Rasul the Prophet is facing humanity. As a messenger, he's facing and dealing with humanity. As Abduhu, he's facing Allah. 
And the word Abduhu is a title of the Prophet in the Quran. It's only used for the Prophet. My point is it doesn't say Al Abd. There can be no that there can be no Al Abd. There's only Abduhu. Alhamdulillah Ladi Anzala Ala Abdihi. For example. There are many other places in the Quran. The point is the word Rab means not just a caretaker as Sometimes, because actually that's Rabawa is Murabbi. This is Raba, Rababa. For those people who know the Arabic language know what I'm saying. But anyway, the point I'm trying to say, the word Rab means master. Rab is the opposite of Abd. Abd is, you know, if you want to understand the word Abd, Rab, the word Rab, understand first the word Abd. If you are a slave, you have no rights. You know, a servant, a servant, somebody who's hired, there's maybe a contract, you have hours of working, you have, you can work so many hours, you can do so many things, you have X amount of responsibilities, and it's, it's limited if you're a servant. But a slave, you're a slave if you're sleeping, if you're awake, no matter what, you're a slave. You're always going to be a slave. You have no right to even ask, why am I being asked to do this? This was the problem that the Quraysh of Mecca had. That Muhammad is introducing a God that is not letting Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab and Umayyah bin Khalf be a Rabb, but they are saying, Bilal is not your Abd, so to say, even though legally in Sharia there is Abd and the Malik and the Abd is what we call it, but there is, uh, you can say, the true owner, the true owner, the true Rabb is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that you have no authority. This is why you will find in the Quran, for example, I'll give you one example. What does Fir'aun say about himself? Ana rabbukumul a'la. You are all my slaves, and I am your master. Meaning you have no authority, I have all authority. Rabb is the one who is not only the creator, not only the master. Not, Rabb has five meanings. The word Rabb has five meanings. The owner, the master, the sustainer. But most important of these is master. And you are, the, and the, by, by definition it means you are a slave, you have no rights. You have no authority. No rights is the word. I'm using this. I know what I'm saying. The word is, he is Rab means you have no rights. And I, I, if he gave me two eyes, it was his will. If he gave me two ears, it's his will. When, which family I was born in, when I will die, where I will die, this is all his will. Then. If he's given me these two eyes, if he's given me these ears, if he's given me this brain, he's going to ask me, what did you do with it? Just like a master can ask a slave, what did you do? I gave you this, I gave you this money to go buy X things in the marketplace, what did you do? So this concept, the concept that the pagans have particularly, you know, the, the idol worshippers, is that, you know how you take a toy and you wind it? and then you let it go and it goes on its own? Or you have seen those watches where you can uh, wind the watch and then it goes? This is the concept of the universe that a lot of the philosophers and a lot of the pagans and the Quraysh had that God's winded up the universe and now the universe is automatically running and God for the most part, or Allah for the most part, He is, he is not involved. I'll share with you something very interesting. All of the du'as in Qur'an start with the word Rabb, except for one. And majority, 99% of the du'as given by the Prophet, they start with Allahumma na Rabb. Allahumma jinni min an nar for example. All the du'as of the Prophet, they start with Allahumma. And all the du'as in Qur'an start with Rabbi, Rabbana, Rabbana Athina, like this. Why? I will explain in my... Second khutbah. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات.
ان الحمد لله نحمده نستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله there have been two concepts of god or two levels of understanding god in history in history not in islam in history one is that there's a historical god he's there he created everything and the second is there's a personal god he is your personal god he is your caretaker he is your sustainer he is your guardian he is your everything the word rub signifies something very revolutionary on the one hand which i explained that means that no one is your owner you are his slave it means that abu jahal your authority is zero abu lahab your authority is zero the rub the master the true master is allah and i am his slave slave even you know that there's a saying in the arabic language i'm translating it that uh kun inna allahi kal mayyit meaning be in front of allah as if a dead body you know the dead body has no control of itself the other people around the dead body they can lift it drop it hurt it give izza to it give it honor they have no this is how a servant of allah a true servant of allah in front of allah is like the uh the dead body whatever allah wants he will do anyway the point i'm trying to make here is the word rub also signifies in addition to what i said that he is a personal god that he is personally because if you are his slave then he personally owns you if you are his slave then he personally owns you so this is why this word is emphasized so much in the quran and all the duas in the quran like i said start with the word rub and all the duas in the sunnah of the prophet start with allahumma and i just want to explain the reason for that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran fadhuhu bi asma'il husna ask allah with all his names this quran says so allahumma means allahumma means allah i ask you by all your beautiful names this is what the word allahumma means in case you didn't know Allahumma means Allah I ask you with all your beautiful names and your beautiful titles I'm asking you by them and this is why the prophet used to say Allahumma and then his dua would be after that Allahumma innaka afuwun karimun tuhibbul afwa fa qanni Allahumma ajinni min an-nar so on and so forth all of them Allahumma because Allah said ask Allah by his beautiful names so the prophet would say Allahumma such and such and such But the word rub is used in Quran because this is how Allah wants to introduce himself to you that I am your personal god and you are my personal slave. And that everyone is God's personal slave in the end of the day. So now let me come to the verse or the ibara of the Quran that I actually wanted to discuss. and then inshallah i know i won't have time today but we will continue next time maybe allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna alladhina qalu rabbuna allah indeed those people who have said that allah is our rabb meaning he is our master and we are his slaves thumma istaqamu then they glue themselves to this this fact that i i have no rights before Allah except the ones he gives me by sharia but in front of Allah i have no rights at all thumma istaqamu and then jaise kehte hain na urdu mein jam jaye then they glue themselves to this thumma istaqamu i'll give you a, an example that uh, i'm going to change the example from one of the scholars he gives an example of this and then i will uh, elucidate a little bit more and then we'll finish Suppose there is a ship and you're on that ship with three other friends. And in this boat there are three types of people. One 
who understands that I am the Abd of Allah and he's my Rabb, meaning he has a personal relationship with God at a very high level. The second, he believes Allah. He believes in Allah and he has some relationship with him but not personal. He hasn't come to the point where he personally feels I am the absolute, absolutely a slave of God. And the third person in this shift is somebody who believes basically that Allah is Al-Khaliq. He's the creator. And now they're on this ship. And a storm comes. And now the ship is wrecked. And the different parts of the wood of the ship are there. And they, three of them, they take this pieces of wood and swim to the nearest island that's over there. So now there are three over there. Now the person who has the relationship with Allah, like he's Al-Khaliq, he's just the creator. He's saying, Allah, why did you do this to me? Rabbi Ahanan, like this. Allah, why did you do this? Why, why you wrecked my ship? Why am I in this mess? Oh Allah, why, why, why? And he's in that confusion. And the second person who has a relationship with Allah, but not a very strong relationship. He starts doing ibadah frantically, asking Allah, Oh Allah, save me, save me, so on and so forth. And the one who has a strong relationship with Allah, who says, قَالُوا إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا He says, uh, it's so interesting Allah did this. He's able to see himself outside the box because he knows behind his problem, Allah is there. He knows behind his musibah, Allah is there. And he then said, he thinks, well, whatever Allah wills, let's take all this piece of wood and make ourselves a small house to live inside. So he takes the wood and starts building the house and other people, then the other two join him and build this house. This is not where the story ends. So now they're living inside this hut, inside this small house that they made. And a few days pass, and they come from wherever they were, and they see, they look at the hut, and now it's on fire. So now the hut is burning. And the one who doesn't be, uh, have, he says Allah, he has in his heart, he believes in Allah, but at the level of, he's just Khalik, he's just a creator. Again, he's complaining to Allah, Allah, why, why did you do this? Why me? Why me? Why did you do this? And the one who believes in Allah and has a relationship with Allah, he starts doing ibadah, oh Allah.